This is the eye model right here, and some of the structures that we can see from this vantage point would be this structure right here. This is the lacrimal gland, and we can see lacrimal gland under here as well. These green things right here are lacrimal gland ducts. What's going to happen is the tears produced by the lacrimal gland will pass through these lacrimal gland ducts and flow across the eye from lateral to medial. Okay, this would be the medial aspect over here where the medial canthus is. Okay, we can see the lacrimal sac over here. They would collect the tears and bring the tears down into the nasal lacrimal duct, which would bring the tears into the nasal cavity. This is why we get a runny nose when we cry. Okay. Some of the other structures we can see here, this structure right up here, you can see it looks kind of muscular. That structure is going to be the muscle known as the levator palpebrae superioris. Levator palpebrae superioris is going to be the muscle in the upper eyelid. And when this muscle contracts, it will raise the upper eyelid so that we can open our eyes. Okay. Now if I were to take this off, we would be able to see the eyeball a little bit better. And here it is. Okay. Some of the structures we can see on the eyeball, this shiny structure right here, if I were to turn the eye to the side, we would be able to see that a little bit better. Look at that window right there. This is the cornea. This cornea right here is going to be the main focuser of light rays as they enter the eye. Okay, this is going to be the greatest bender of light rays. The lens that we'll see on the inside of the eye, the lens is more of a fine focus. But this will focus the light the most, the cornea. If someone were to wear contact lenses, those contact lenses would sit right on top of the cornea, almost as if you have a new cornea. Okay? When people get laser surgery for their eyes, that laser is going to reshape the cornea so that it focuses light better onto the retina. Okay? But that's the cornea, and the cornea is continuous with this white layer right here. This is the sclera. This would be superior rectus, inferior rectus we would be able to see here. Lateral rectus we would see on the side over here, and then medial rectus would be on the side here. The nose would be right here. One of the muscles we could see is this muscle right here, which would be the lateral rectus muscle. Okay, remember the other side of the eye was the medial side where the tears drained into the nasal cavity. This is the lateral side, lateral rectus. This muscle up here is going to be superior rectus. And then there's going to be an inferior rectus muscle underneath here. And then over top of inferior rectus, there's going to be this inferior oblique muscle right there. Okay, superior oblique we would be able to see on the top if I were to turn the model like so and show you the tendon right here of superior oblique. We can also see inferior rectus right here and then this structure right here, this is going to be the optic nerve where it exits the back of the eye. Underneath the inferior rectus, we see this yellow stuff. This is fat. There's going to be fat padding inside the orbit to protect the eye. Now here's the cornea, and if I were to take the top of this model apart, we can see more stuff on the inside. We get a better view of the iris right here. Okay, this is the iris. This is what's going to give you your eye color. This person has blue eyes because they have a blue iris. There's a little hole in the center of the iris known as the pupil. That pupil is going to allow light rays to pass into the eye so those light rays can hit the photoreceptors in the retina that's in the eye. Okay. This pupil can change sizes. It can get smaller or larger because of the muscles in the iris here. And that pupil will change sizes based on various conditions. If you want to allow less light into the eye, the pupil will constrict. 
If you want to allow more light into the eye, the pupil will get wider or dilate. From this vantage point, we can also see the choroid layer. The choroid layer is this dark vascular layer. There's a lot of blood vessels in this layer. If we were to open this part of the model, in the anterior cavity we have aqueous humor in here. But back here in the posterior cavity we're going to have vitreous humor. This structure right here represents the vitreous humor or vitreous body. This vitreous body has a couple of functions. One of the things it will do is help to hold the retina onto the back of the eye. The only place the retina is attached is where the nerve fibers exit the back of the eye to make the optic nerve. Another thing that this will do is absorb the heat generated by the light rays so the retina is not damaged. We can also see from this vantage point the lens right here. Okay, if I were to pick up the lens and show you what it looks like, we would see it here. Okay. Now the lens, the lens is going to be the fine focus in the eye. This lens is going to be able to change shape. It's flexible. This lens is suspended from the ciliary body, which we can see in here, as being this red portion here. Okay. Those are ciliary muscles that will constrict and dilate to change the shape of the lens. Okay. These white things right here are suspensory ligaments. They'll suspend the lens from the ciliary body. When the ciliary body muscles contract, they'll constrict this circular opening right here which will put slack on the suspensory ligaments which will allow the lens to get fatter. But when the ciliary muscles relax, they'll dilate this opening, make it wider, pull or tighten the suspensory ligaments so that the lens will get thinner. And this orange layer is the retina. This would be part of the optic disc where the optic nerve would exit the back of the eye. We can see this little pink structure right here. This is the macula right here, and the macula is a part of the retina that has a high concentration of cones, which are color receptors. In the center of the macula, we would have the fovea centralis, and the fovea centralis is made exclusively of cones. That's where light gets focused. Okay. Out here in the periphery, in this part of the retina out here, we've mainly got rods. Rods are going to be receptors that will detect low levels of light. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.